students frequently get this question wrong without realizing it. So I'm going to give you two important factoids about restless leg syndrome that you should be aware of, okay? Now, obviously it's our diagnosis here. We're not trying to make this a long rambling vignette like many psych questions are. Why do I say students frequently get this question wrong? Is because they will often just jump on pramipexil or ropinirole as the answer, which in this case, it's the wrong fucking answer, okay? Now, restless leg syndrome, its etiology is often linked to defective dopamine transmission. So on USMLE questions, if they force you into choosing a medication, you will choose a D2 agonist like pramipexil or ropinirole. However, your first factoid is that one of the most common causes of restless leg syndrome is iron deficiency anemia. So especially in a young menstruating woman or in a woman who's pregnant who has hemodilution, who has restless leg syndrome, you need to do a complete blood count and check iron and ferritin first. Okay, this is especially high yield on 2CK step three questions, where as I said, students will just jump on the D2 agonist. You gotta chill the fuck out and just remember, you're gonna check iron and ferritin first, do a complete blood count, okay? And if that's normal, you do pramipexil or ropinirole. I've seen it also for 2CK questions where they'll give you the, the vignette of restless leg syndrome. They show you the MCV, it's normal, uh, hematocrit's normal, and then the answer is just pramipexil or ropinirole. And they don't ask anything about iron deficiency. Student can get by sort of lucky without even knowing that iron deficiency is a common cause. Uh, but that's why they mention that information in the vignette, okay? So your second factoid about restless leg syndrome, the fact that pramipexil or ropinirole, D2 agonists, are effective treatment uh, because the syndrome is often linked to defective dopamine transmission, you need to know that patients with restless leg syndrome are at increased risk of developing Parkinson disease later. So they might give you this vignette and then they just say the patients at increased risk of developing what later in life? Answer, Parkinson disease, okay? They will ask that on the USMLE. It's not hard, okay? If you just like think about it for a second, you say, well, that makes sense. If we treat with a D2 agonist, then theoretically, the patient probably has a problem with dopamine and would be at risk of Parkinson's disease. But rather than just making that inference uh, during the exam, we're communicating the factoid explicitly right now, okay? So check iron ferritin, iron deficiency anemia, uh, one of the most common causes of restless leg syndrome before you just hop on the D2 agonist. And then number two, uh, increased risk of Parkinson's disease, okay? So as far as what I've read in the literature, uh, restless leg syndrome, about 60% of the time follows an autosomal dominant pattern with incomplete penetrance. I've never seen that specifically asked on USMLE, but I'm just communicating that as one of my final points because uh, when we think about like, why would a patient get, get restless leg syndrome? Like what's actually the etiology? Um, it should be noted that there is a hereditary component to it. And apparently there's many different causes, including renal disease, etc. cetera. Uh, but for USMLE, iron deficiency anemia first, you should think about, followed by treating with the D2 agonist with risk of Parkinson's disease later. Sertraline choice E, Wrong fucking answer. SSRIs are actually a risk factor for restless leg syndrome. And then suprazidone, choice F, wrong answer because antipsychotics are D2 antagonists. And clearly that would exacerbate uh, restless leg syndrome, not treat it. Okay, that's it. Not going to be a 90 minute clip. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.